In their history, Burnley have won three major honours. The last of these came in 1960, when they won a surprise First Division title. The two others came under a man named John Hallworth. He was in charge of Burnley for 14 years as secretary manager, taking him to the top of the English game. Sadly, his time at the club would be tragically cut short. This is the story of John Hallworth, the man who made Burnley. John Hallworth was born in Accrington on the 8th of May 1876. He was the nephew of England international George Hallworth, but John would not go far on the pitch himself. He would play for amateur side Meadow Bank, but never made it as a professional. It would be on the touchline and in the boardroom where he made his name. After finishing playing, Hallworth became a secretary for Meadow Bank. During his time, he would merge the club with Accrington Stanley in 1897 and was named secretary of the merger club. At the time, the secretary was the de facto manager, as they would pick the team and be in charge of recruitment. Hallworth would have the first of his two long roles in this position. Under Hallworth, Accrington Stanley became one of the best teams in non-league, winning the Lancashire combination in both 1903 and 1906, before he moved to a different part of Lancashire. Hallworth would be appointed secretary manager of Burnley in 1910. The club were in the second division and had recently suffered, having lost manager Spent Whitaker in a rail accident. Hallworth would ring the changes. At the time, Burnley played in green, but Hallworth considered the colour unlucky. He opted to go for the claret and blue colours that First Division champions Aston Villa wore, colours that Burnley have played in ever since. He would sign the first ever foreign player for Burnley in German-born centre-back Max Seberg, and recruited half-back Tommy Boyle from Barnsley, who would go on to be one of Burnley's greatest captains. England centre-forward Bertram Freeman who had gone to score over 100 goals over 10 years at Burnley, was also persuaded to join from Everton, with the £800 fee coming from a promising FA Cup run. Hallworth had persuaded the Burnley board to move away from only recruiting local players, and it would soon prove to be a wise idea. Freeman would net 32 goals in his first full season for the Clarets, but they narrowly missed out on promotion, finishing in third place. The next year would be one of success though. They climbed up one place to second to seal promotion to the top flight and also reach the FA Cup semi-finals for the first time, where defeated by Sunderland. In Burnley's first season back in the top flight, they proved they weren't just there to make up the numbers. They finished in third place and would have a date with Destiny too. In the FA Cup, they faced South Shields, winning 3-1 at home. This was followed by victories over Derby and Bolton. Next up was a big tie away to Sunderland at Roker Park. The tie in Wearside would finish 0-0, and a replay would be held at Turf Moor. 50,000 spectators would be there, more than the ground had ever held before. Burnley would win 2-1, to upset the odds, with many considering Sunderland the favourites. The Burnley Express proclaimed that if Burnley could carry on this way, no team on earth could stop them. Burnley faced Sheffield United at Old Trafford in the semi-finals. The game finished 0-0, but in a replay at Goodson Park, a header from Tommy Doyle sealed Burnley's place in the FA Cup final for the first time. It would be there where they faced Liverpool. Horth would take his players to resort in Lytham, Lancashire, to relax before the final, where they spent time boating and playing golf. They were followed on the train to Wembley by around 170 special trains for Burnley fans to travel to the capital. Burnley arrived at Crystal Palace, and it would be the first final that a reigning monarch would attend, with George V in attendance. Around 72,000 supporters were estimated to attend, with some fans outside standing on poles and sitting in trees to see the game. Both sides had chances in the first half, going in goalless at the break. 18 minutes into the second half though, Bert Freeman would prove reliable as ever, netting to give Burnley the lead. It was written in the stars, as Freeman's father had come all the way from Australia to see his son play in the final. The goal was enough, and in front of an estimated 72,000 supporters, Burnley held on to win the FA Cup for the first time. It was their first ever major honour, and to date, they have not won the FA Cup since. Tommy Boyle climbed the steps to be the first ever captain to receive the FA Cup from a monarch. John Horwath would himself later receive a letter of congratulations from the King. Burnley returned to around 10,000 supporters at the train station and were paraded to Turf Moor for their next game, with between 60 and 120,000 supporters estimated to have lined the streets to cheer them on. Burnley finished fourth the next season, but Horwath's work was disrupted by the First World War, with the league suspended for four years. They would, though, pick up where they left off. Their first season after the war saw Burnley finish in second place. 
their highest ever finish in the top flight so far, and the next season, they would go one better. They would start the 2021 campaign disappointingly, but Haworth soon turned things around. Burnley went on an incredible 30-game unbeaten run that would ultimately see them crown champions of England, finishing five points ahead of Manchester City. The run also included 7-1 wins over Oldham and Aston Villa and a 6-0 win over Sheffield United on Christmas Day. Their run of 30 games without defeat in a league season would not be eclipsed until Arsenal's Invincibles in 2004. Haworth had worked wonders, winning Burnley their first FA Cup and now making them champions of England, having taken over a grief-stricken club languishing in the second tier. What he had done was remarkable, but the golden era was soon to come to a tragic end. Many of Burnley's stars were beginning to age, and so Haworth had to think of a regeneration plan. Whilst Burnley had finished third the next campaign, they sank to 15th the next, and the campaign after, tragedy struck. After going out in the rain, John Haworth contracted pneumonia, and succumbed to the illness on the 4th of December 1924, passing away at the age of 48. It was a horrific way to end 14 glorious years between him and Burnley, and the club had experienced a second consecutive manager die in office. John Haworth would be buried back in his hometown of Accrington, where his life and brilliant managerial career began. In 2014, a hundred years after their FA Cup victory, Burnley clubbed together with supporters to provide a headstone for Holbus grave that had previously been unmarked, in recognition of what he did for the club. John Holworth may not have a list of honours like other British managers, but Burnley will forever be in his debt. Without him, they may have never won a major honour, and their league title in 1960 would not have been possible without the transformation that Holworth oversaw. The club may have been lost to time without him, but instead, he turned them around and made history with Burnley, making them two out of their three major trophies. Burnley have experienced many years in the top flight in recent memory, but without Haworth's work, they could have ended up a non-league team. Haworth has an immortal legacy at Burnley, and hopefully one day, a statue of him will stand outside the stadium to honour what he did for the Clarets. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the AFC Finners channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please have a look at the channel down below and check out the hundreds of videos available. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can do so in the link below for as little as £1 a month. Please let me know what you thought of this video and what topic you'd like me to cover next. See you next time.